Hello and welcome. It's Wednesday. That means another uh, watercolor demo. I'm Shelley Pryor. I'm a watercolor artist in Ontario, Canada. And every Wednesday I offer a free demonstration in watercolor. So today we're going to talk about uh, doing some ink and wash. Uh, I don't I don't usually do a lot of this, but I love to do it in my sketchbooks. Um, so let's let's talk about some of the things that we're going to need first. Uh, but before we get rolling into this, if you are just joining, make a comment, mention where you're from, and uh, let's just switch on over here to my tabletop version here. And I'm going to talk about uh, you know different ways you can use these these um, pens but let's talk about the materials first all right so I'm gonna zoom in on this I've got um, an assortment of different pens they come in different sizes uh, the most important thing that you're going to need here uh, you want to have um, permanent uh, permanent ink and um, this one's archival, acid-free, and uh, it needs to be waterproof. So make sure that whatever you use <laughs> isn't going to wash away when you actually use your, um, your watercolor. So there are four different sizes. You can see the different sizes here. So this one being very fine, and then we have a 0 0.2, and a 0 0.5, and a 0 0.7, and they're all different widths. So, uh, let me see, grab a piece of something here just to show the different uh, sizes. So, you, you will sometimes want to be doing something very fine, you know, very fine lines, you know, that sort of thing. And they will progressively get larger with each number that you go up. So, try a few different ones here. And depending on like the size you're doing or the um, um, the complexity of something, you might want to uh, switch up to a larger larger grade. So you know you can see that they progressively get larger. Now these ones are these ones are Stadler. Um, I also use Micron pens, which are really good. Uh, but as I said, the most important thing is that they're waterproof because you don't want that washing away on you. So if I were to take some of my, my uh, paint here and put it over top, I don't want it all running out. So that's, that's the important thing here. You want to make sure that it's bleed proof. Now, I would let it set for a few minutes. I didn't let it set very long there. So it is, you know, it's actually activating a little bit, but that's only just because it is, um, like, I just did it. So if you're going to ink before you do your wash, I would suggest um, give it a little time to dry, right? So don't don't go rushing in with your, with your uh, uh, watercolor, unless that's what you want to happen. Right? Sometimes that is what you want to happen, and, and that's fine, but I would suggest uh, letting it dry. You can also do your inking afterwards. So if you wanted to do your watercolor first and then put the inking on, that's perfectly fine. But in any case, what I normally do is I will start off with a pencil drawing, right? Because ink is pretty permanent. <laughs> you, you may not want... Um, you, you want to get the structure, at least the bones of your painting done first. So, um, let me just show you my in my sketchbook here. I've got a couple of different, um, like I've got quite a bit of ink in this sketchbook, but um, I've got all kinds of mediums in here. But here's an example of, of some ink that I've done cross-hatching, and then I've, I've added a little bit of watercolor to it. And... Um, Here's another example. Uh, so, you know, you can do your inking and then you can add your, your watercolor to enhance it. Now, one thing I want to mention about this book is that it is a fairly smooth texture. So the, the paper that you're going to be using is going to influence how smooth or 
um, sort of coarse your, your textures are going to be. But I would also recommend that instead of taking your, your pen, let's take, I'll take a, a number five, let's find my five here. Okay, so I'm going to take this number five here, and what I would suggest is to, when, you, when you're actually drawing with this, I wouldn't do all of your lines like one continuous, never lift the, the pen. Create your drawings like, like a sketch, right? So you might do a line like this, a little bit broken so that it's a little bit irregular. The thing is, okay, here's the, here's the thing that I see a lot of people do when they're starting off in ink and wash is that, you know, they'll get out a ruler and that, you know, they, they use a lot and then it becomes like a draftsman. It doesn't become, it doesn't have that sketchy character to it and um, not sketchy character, you know what I mean, <laughs> but um, that, uh, you know, it hasn't got any personality to it. So. Uh, make all of your lines a little bit irregular. Don't try to make them perfect. Once you start making them perfect in the beginning, you kind of have to stay that way through the rest of your painting to be consistent. <laughs> so, um, you know, you might want to just sort of make it look a little bit sketchy. So, you know, if this was a house or whatever, um, I, I could I could go around a window and never lift my pen. And there's nothing wrong with it, but it looks a little stiff, a little bit too contrived. I feel that, this is a personal preference, but I feel that the ink and wash looks so much better when you um, sort of sketch it in instead of drawing it in like a draftsman. So that's great, you know, just, you know, keep that, keep that in mind. Don't forget too that you have different sizes you can choose. So you might decide to do a bit of shading and you might want to do it with, you know, a darker, a darker uh, or a thicker marker or pen. These aren't markers actually, these are pens. But, um, you know, you'll, you know, if you have a dark area that you want to fill in there, you could do that. Now, I also want to talk about how much you need to do like it's entirely up to you i mean you can see i could do something entirely with pen and i could add water watercolor to this afterwards that's fine but um uh, let me see here uh but you could do just sort of minimal like i did on these ones right so on these ones i did minimal sketching and more wash so you know, you can use any of these uh, techniques to your satisfaction, right? So, but you can see here that a lot of these lines, look how sketchy these little, these little lines are here, right? Um, some areas don't even have much um, ink at all. And, you know, where the details are, I put a little more ink because I can get a little bit more contrast there. So, um, all right. So I have drawn out here um, another little character here. This was uh, a fellow from a, a car show that I went to. And um, I'm just going to quickly sketch him in with my, uh, maybe my number two. And I have penciled him in just basically to save time. That's what I've done. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so I'm going to try to resist the temptation to clean it up. And, that, and I think that's when we're trying really hard to make something look, look really realistic is that we want to clean it up. And in, an, in our efforts to do that, we actually make more problems for ourselves because it make then now we're committed, right? We have to really make it perfect. So I think it's a lot better just to make it a little bit sketchy and it looks intentional, right? It's more, it, it has more character, I think, when it's got that sort of sketchy feel to it. 
All right, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm looking for the main shapes. Right, uh, coming up in here. So you'll notice I'm not doing one continuous line. I'm, I'm making, I'm, it's like I'm doing it with a sketch pencil. I did do it with pencil first, but I'm still wanting to uh, do the same thing with my pen. And I think this is, this is one of the things that really makes um, the inking look kind of interesting, my personal opinion. All right, so we've got a whole lot of dark area up in here and where the eyes are, but uh, I'll do my best to, to make it out. So I didn't do so much drawing with my pencil that, you know, there's nothing left for the pen to do. So I'm, I'm going to uh, try to do, you know, my cleanup, you know, any details with the pen, not with the pencil. So I left that for the pen to do. All right, and we'll come down here and this guy's got a great nose. <laughs> He's got this really pronounced nose here which I think gives him character and this this big woolly white beard gives him real personality. All right. So you've got some heavy creases where the cheeks are. Now, we're coming to the part where I might do some of the um some of the hair, right? So do I draw in all the hair. I could, but since it's such a white beard, I think I'm going to do minimal sketching here for this. So I'm going to come in and just sort of suggest some of this. And I think a lot of this I'm going to end up doing with my brush because I think too much, um, too much inking for hair ends up looking a little bit too, um, oh, I don't know what the word would be, but maybe just a little bit too, too much attention to an area that I really don't need that much attention. I'm going to put a little shading in here with the pen, right? That's not exactly how his teeth look. Now, I could cross hatch this, right? So I could go in a couple of different directions here, like make my lines go uh, diagonally one way, diagonally the other way. I can even put in vertical and horizontal. I, you know, when you're doing cross hatching, it doesn't have to be um, just two directions. It can be multiple directions, as you could see from some of my other drawings there. But um, all right, so he's got this terrific sort of long, long uh, handlebar mustache as well. I could stand and people watch all day. I don't like traveling much, like sitting in airports, but I do like people watching. And sometimes I'll pull out my sketchbook and I will sketch people. <laughs> sometimes I get caught. <laughs> and uh, I, I recently went to um, Texas and uh, I was sketching somebody and I did get caught. You know, not that that's a bad thing, but I think they start to feel very self-conscious at that point. Uh, but so most most of my portraits I do from from uh, photos. So when I, you can see that I'm doing this kind of scribbly. I'm using kind of a scribbly uh, technique.
but I am indicating maybe the direction of the the hair just a few little lines in here and I may end up and erasing some of my pencil lines because well they're they're pretty uh, sketchy at this point like I mean they're all over the place inconsistent with uh, some of my pen marks that I'm making so I may come in and and do that but This guy's got a lanyard around his neck. I'm not sure if I want to include that, but uh, oh, I might. Let me include that. But again, it's I'm not going to do one straight continuous line. I'm just going to make that uh, look a little sketchy. Now I'm looking over here. This actually comes about here on the beard so I'm looking for where it lines up with the rest of his face and so on all right so come in here and indicate where his shoulders are. I'm not going to continue this right to the edges of your of my paper and that's one thing I, I am trying to to get a lot of my students to do is you don't have to fill it side to side. You know, it doesn't have to be complete all the way to the edges. In fact if you are taking your paint to the edges of your paper um, I don't put any detail around those edges. Um, it it kind of leads you right out of the painting if uh, if you do that so I would suggest uh, not not necessarily taking it to the edges. I mean, you can, but personally, I don't care for that too much. Um, okay, so we have quite a bit of shading and stuff that's going to be going on in around his face, and you can see I, you know, I'm doing some some shading maybe with this. Let's do a little bit on his hat. Um, we've got the seams of the hat. And then there's some you know, kind of strong shading here. So I'm going to do a little bit with my pen. I could do all of this with just watercolor at this point. I could leave it, you know, just this minimal inking and then I could come in with watercolor. But I think I'm going to do a little bit with um, with my pen, just to show you some of the techniques I can use with my pen. So I'm using kind of a series of um, diagonal lines here for the shading to come along the hat. Now, if I wanted to make some of this darker, and I think I will, I could turn it and work on the diagonal. Now I don't have to do everything that I just did. I can do just part of it. And so that that will give me a, the look of, uh, you know, some of it is a little bit dark and then some of it's extra dark. So I've got actually more ink covering some areas. So if I do the diagonal in the other direction, This is called cross hatching, and that's terrific. Um, I'm going to put maybe some of the creases. Uh, this I'll just ink in solid. I'm going to put in some of the shadow on his face with with ink. Again, with the diagonal. Pretty strong shadow down one side of his nose and up in here there's pretty strong shadow in there too under the hat so let's get that a little bit darker if I wanted extra dark I can go in another direction I can go in three or four or five di different directions 
to make something darker. So you see I was able to make that quite a bit darker there. And so I'm going to do some of the inking here and you may choose just to add extra diagonal lines in the same direction so you know you can you can mix it up you can do it all kinds of different ways uh, you know it's all really up to you but I'm going to show you a few of the ways that I like to use so I'm going with the diagonal but I'm not covering everything that I did the first place you see here I have some diagonal lines going this way and then the the diagonals in the other direction I am not taking it all the way down the nose because it's not quite as dark down there so if I need it still a little bit darker I'll choose another direction and I will just come in and get a little more shadow in here this fellow had a lot of I mean he's got a good solid cap there in bright sunshine so he's got a lot of shadow on his face it's a little hard to see his eyes but let's get a little bit of shading in here too you just see the little glint in his eye on the right hand side not much just a little bit so he's got a couple of little smile lines put those in he's got a fair bit of shadow on the end of his nose now remember that all these shadows <clears throat> are also going to um, uh, help to create form and shape and things like that we can do all of that with pen or with uh, wash as well but I think you know in this case I'm kind of using my wash partly for shading but also for color of course because the pen doesn't give me that uh, now his shirt is pretty dark um, I guess I'm gonna need to do some shading here now this shirt actually has kind of a ribbing so I guess I could even follow the the contour here now I think I'm going to switch up pens here because I want to get a little bit of a darker line what was I using there I was using a two now there's a bit of a darker line so I'm going to switch up now and I'm going to start putting in some darker lines with a a wider pen so some of the things I want extra dark like right along this uh, edge of his cap for example you know and some of those darks can be very helpful and where else can I maybe around his ear got some darks in there and maybe the the whites of his eyes or the pupils and such just hint at some of that in there all right so I've got a little bit that's darker and uh, I can come in and maybe just hint at some of this um, shirt I want to give the idea that it's darker but I don't want to fill it all in go right to the edges of my paper because this is a sketchbook and I just don't want to do that much work you know, I'm trying to capture it and sort of quick and spontaneous so I don't want to invest a lot of time on this I want to get it fairly accurate if I can but So I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Now, why am I not, if I want to make it darker, why am I not using a, um, a heavier pen? It's mainly because I want to um, create more of a, a 
delicate, shall we say, shading effect. So I'm trying to do it with a smaller pen or finer pen. And I can actually create a gradation. So, you know, so that it looks like it's going from dark to light seamlessly, which it would be hard to do. Now I can put all my strokes really close together and that's going to make it darker. The closer I put them together, the darker it's going to seem. Or I can space them out. Now most of this is just, I'm showing you so far, is cross-hatching. Well, we did cover a little bit of sort of this, um, just this, this swirly, sketchy kind of effect for his beard. And let me just get a little bit more done here on his shirt. This part's a little lighter over here, so I won't do it quite as dark there. Uh, but I think I'll do some vertical lines as well. Once you do the vertical lines, it becomes less of a um, uh, crisscross effect and it almost looks a little bit more like a texture, like a like a, a little bit more uniform, shall we say? All right. Now get you can get creative to things with things too, and you can definitely uh, come in and and. You know, if you had something like um, like trees, right? If I were doing trees, I, I would probably do a lot of this. Oops, sorry, can't see because my hand's in the way. But you know, I would do a lot of scribbling. If you were doing a flower, um, you might follow the contour of the the petals. Like if this was a petal, for example. Right? You might follow the contour of that. Uh, so there's all kinds of things that you can do with your inking. But um, but in any case, it's it's loose, it's free. It's it, enjoy, enjoy using your pen without being too uh, precise and, and um, you know, like a draftsman kind of thing. Dra drafting's fine if you're drafting. <laughs> I think it's great if you're drafting. Um, if you're drawing, maybe maybe you could be a little bit more creative. So I want to keep this lanyard looking separate. So I'm going to use a thicker pen for this. And I'm not going to go right to the bottom because I don't want to draw too much attention there. I want it to look like it's just fading away. But so that it looks separate from the shirt. And I'll just take that bit on the shoulders here too. There we go. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit more sketching. I tend to use a two most often, I think, for a lot of what I'm doing here. But let me zoom out a bit so you can see everything. All right, so we have, you know, we have some more shading I think I can do in here because there's actually a bit of a cast shadow on the on the cap as well. Let's go diagonal. And there's some shading on the hat as as well. So I'm going to just come in with some diagonal lines and you can leave them just diagonal lines too and you, they don't have to be all cross hatched. You know, sometimes you just want lighter a lighter effect. So just use, you know, fewer lines and just leave it at one diagonal. That's fine. But uh, you can you can take this as far or as as little as you want. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this and then I'm going to start coming in with a bit of color. Now I should have picked something maybe a little more colorful than a guy in gray, but I could change that, right? I don't have to do it in gray. So now over to my um, over to my 
uh, watercolor, except I want to let this dry a little bit longer before I, I do that, right? Uh, but I probably can work on my background. But before I do anything, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. And kneaded erasers are, are great because um, you, can, you can actually just roll it and it doesn't sort of rough up the paper, which is better than, you know, when you use a nylon eraser, you're actually using friction on the paper. So um, that's great. Now, I was able to do all of this uh, texture on here quite easily because it is a smooth surface. So I'm going to show you in a second how this would work on a cold press paper. This one's pretty smooth, but if I had a cold press paper, it might be a little bit different um, for sketching. All right. Well, he's a little bit that. So um, now I'm going to take my brush. Uh, I've got a number eight squirrel hair brush here. That's what I'm using. And for the, for this background, let's put a little color into this. I just wet wet my palette here to clean it off. I just neglected to clean it off, so I'm going to just wipe some of this. I've got a lot of blue here. And the gray, I think I'll leave because I'll probably be using that. I'm going to leave that. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of um, green. So I'll mix up a green. I've got some cobalt blue and maybe some uh, gamboge. Get kind of a green. Let's make it a little darker with a bit of paints. All right, so now with the inking, or with the wash, I should say, once you've done the inking, is I can come in and um, start, and I can be really precise, but honestly, I've got the ink lines, so it's not really that crucial. So I don't really have to be too fussy about it. If I go over the hat, it's not a big deal. Now, I just picked up some some clean water here and I've just faded it away just to make that just to imply that there's background but not to put so much in that it's going to be a distraction and then there's some other colors there looks like there's a bit of pink and I don't have to follow it to what my photo has um, like there's people back there and stuff uh, but it's kind of interesting and it adds a little bit of color. So I will do a little bit of this a Little bit of pink here, and I'm not going to try to You know indicate that those are people. I'm just going to put a little bit of color in there. That's it Now to make his beard like that beard is so um, Appealing because it's so much contrast and you know, it's got so much character so I want to make sure that I'm um, real puddle of water on here. Um, I want to make sure I have some contrast there, so I'm going to take some Payne's Gray here, and I want to make sure that, you know, I get some good darks around this, this uh, beard. for blotting and working in the sketchbook is it's a different kind of paper of course and being a smooth paper it does make washes a little trickier so you got to be lightning fast when you're working in a sketchbook trying to trying to create washes so rinse blot quick and get that spread out all right so his shirt is kind of gray too so I think I'm just going to continue this down right into his shirt rinse blot and spread that out all right so it all just becomes one and I really like the 
the kind of the marriage of be, between the um, ink and the watercolor. I love that. I think it's one of the nicest things in in my sketchbook is when to have have the two working together. All right, so I'm just letting that fade away like that. Uh, this lanyard, I'm not going to worry too much about. It's pretty colorful, but um, and it's got writing on it and everything else. You know, include what you think is important. I don't think it's that important, so I'm I'm just going to leave it. Now I'm going to give him I'm going to give him a different colored hat just because it's just too much gray for me, and I'm going to use. Um, let me see. I'll use, uh, let's use a little ultramarine. I don't use ultramarine all that much these days. I don't know why. But I'm going to use some ultramarine. Put a little gray in it just so it's not bright. So it's more of a denim color. Put a little Payne's gray into it as well. So get like kind of a denim blue maybe. And there's a lot of light areas in here. So I want to keep my watercolor fairly diluted. But I will try to get my page, or try to keep my page from getting too wet. I'm going to put in the, the shadows first. Let's go over some of my shadows that I did. I'm going to rinse and blot my brush. And start spreading this out. Let's get the the visor part it does well. I had to think of what what's that word? <laughs> Sometimes I forget what common things are called. It's just, I don't know. Age, I guess. So <clears throat> I'm going to come in and punch up these shadows, and I basically already have them established somewhat with the ink, and I can just basically embellish them. All right, rinse and blot. Smooth out any of the edges that you want smooth, but you do have to work really fast on on a hot press paper because. It, um, it doesn't want to smooth out all that well. So I'm going to use a little bit of, um, he's got a fairly pink skin, so I'm going to use uh, Permanent Rose, and I'm going to mix raw sienna with that to get a, his flesh color. Thin it down a little bit. Don't have too much on my brush. All right, so. I guess it could be a little pinker than that. And I'm going to go in right under the visor and everything. And going to use a few shorter strokes. Whoops, that's his mustache. I almost forgot. Um, shorter strokes on his, uh, where his beard connects to his face. I'm going to leave that white highlight on his nose because I think that that's kind of really prominent. I'm going to leave more light on the right hand side because he's actually got a fair bit of light on the to the right of him. But I'm looking to see where those shadows go. All right, so he's got a little bit of pink on his ear. And of course, he's got pink lips. Let's come down into here. Now he's got this wonderful gray in his beard. And Normally I would spend a little more time on this, but because we are, you know, just doing a quickie here. Whoops, before I go on to his beard, I think I should get his neck as well. He's got some of his skin tone on his neck here. And I might cut 
come in with uh, just a couple of extra hits of this color just where it needs to be a little bit darker like around the nose up near his ear a lot of glare on this for me so to keep leaning over to one side to see what see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to come in now with a little bit of gray because he's got this great beard that is gray, and I'm just going to do a little bit where I see the shadows. Um, maybe hint at some of the direction, but I want to create some of the form. He's got a fair bit of shadow right down underneath here. Get really up on the tiptoe so I can do this really light. But I am going to leave a lot of the paper just, just white. Because that's my highlight. And I can come in multiple times if I want to, but uh, this is giving me, you know, some shadows and stuff on his beard. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to just, I don't want to draw too much attention to his lanyard. I'm just going to make the lanyard sort of the skin tone color, just to fill something in here, but... Uh, I don't want to do too much to that. I don't want to draw attention to it, so... <sighs> Hi, Bev. All my regulars are here. Thank you so much for joining. Um, all right, so... I may come in and do a little bit more here just to get a little bit more shape. And if I spread out my brush, I can probably even get a little bit of texture in here. Kind of a cool character. All right, so I don't think I want to do too much more to this beard. I I liked I like the fact that it's still got a lot of white to it, but it's uh, still sketchy looking, and that's it. So I think this little guy, um, I think he's mostly done. The only thing I might do is get a little bit more shadow under that cap. It does have, I want the feeling of strong sun, so I want to get a little more shading underneath this cap. Maybe down that nose too. That cast shadow is pretty strong. You notice I didn't go around the eyes, I just kind of went through them. soften some of this. I don't want to soften it too much because it's strong strong sunshine. And when you have strong sun you have um, har harder shadows. Anyway so that's that's my guy and uh, I could probably put a little more shadow on this cap. So let's get this a little darker. So I'm coming in with some gray to do this. So that that ink work is still going to show and that's that's kind of good that's still going to show through that didn't want to go that dark right there but it's done now so
All right. So I think I think my guys. I'm gonna call it quits here, and uh, yeah. So that's that's him. He's got a lot of shadow on his face. You can just you can just see his eye poking out right there. Um, what what colors did I use for the shadow on his face? Same colors, the skin tone colors. Um, I used um, permanent rose, uh, raw sienna. And I darkened it with just a little touch of uh, Payne's Gray. But mostly I just made the color darker. I, if you add a lot of Payne's Gray to something, it grays it down. It Yes, it will get darker, but it will gray it down too. Uh, so I didn't want to get the shadows overly gray. So I used more pigment, less water. Um, but I did dull it slightly with, with the Payne's Gray. Um, I'm managing yeah I am making them look younger aren't I yeah I can make I can make them look older I can certainly come in and add a few more um few, few more creases that would make him look older right like more his age like he's got some prominent creases here and I could come in with some of the smile lines and so on and you know just just that makes him look older right uh, but I didn't want to do all of the wrinkles and, and the, I would caution you about this. Don't do all the wrinkles with the ink <laughs> because that makes them look like lines. Looks like instead of wrinkles, they look like he's got lines drawn on them. So um, you do some of that with your with your watercolor. Now where ink and wash really shines, I think, is in architecture, right? So you get something like like this, for example, or let me let me see. I've got a couple of examples here. You know, you get something like this or like this. You know, when you have something like this, you would really be able to like use the ink and make it quite nice. But the temptation again is to make it look. Uh, really precise and everything else and the thing is, is if you break the line every once in a while or kind of backtrack and overlap a line a little bit um, it looks more hand-drawn it looks more um, less computer generated you know like there's so many things that are computer generated nowadays and to make it look like it's hand-drawn um, has a different quality about it, I think. And so let me just show you on a piece of, um, this is Arches, 140 pound cold press paper. Now the texture is a little different, right? I don't know if you can actually see the texture on here. But um, if I were to say sketch this, takes a second to come into focus here all right so if I were to sketch this out let's just um, and I can already you can hear the texture on the paper right you can actually hear that this paper is my pencil sort of hitting all the bumps and so on so if I were to draw this And as for the drawing, I would probably do this much and just get the bare bones of it, but the rest I would do with the with the pen. It just kind of goes together well with that that whole idea of making it feel like a sketch and not a draftsman's version. All right, so there's a couple of little lines here, something like that. I don't have to draw that with pe the pencil. I can do the rest with the with the ink, but but just to get it sort of drawn out, I want to. Uh, sort of find my placement of things, shall we say. 
All right, so I've got uh, just about there. This was, uh, I think, in Cuba that I took this picture. And then there's one, two, three, four, uh, something like that. Okay. So now as I ink this, you're going to see a real difference in, you know, how the ink is going on the paper. Um, I actually find that a, sometimes a heavier pen is easier because with a little more ink, um, it, it's not like um, driving over those rumble strips, <laughs> you know, when you're driving, those rumble strips that they put on the side of the road kind of thing. Um, but it also helps, I find, to hold the pen vertically, like 90 degrees. If you're holding it on an angle like a pen, you find that it, the flow of the pen isn't going to be quite the same. But um, it's definitely harder to get the, the ink on a rough texture without it without holding it vertically right so if you hold it vertically it can get into the little bumps a little bit more that doesn't mean to say that i want you to like just take it and do one one line you can still do that sort of sketchy feel but you may have to hold the pen a little more vertically in order to get the ink to to come out of the pen properly But it's definitely got a a different feel, and you'll you'll notice this if you actually are um, painting or drawing with it. And you can take your time and and you know draw all of these out nice and precise, and you know whatever you want to do, um, you know accurately or whatever. But uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to be doing that this morning because it's just going to be way too con time consuming. But the, the idea is that, you know, the inking for something like this is great. Now, if I wanted to, before I do all that inking, I could come in and I could just put in, I could put in the watercolor first. So, and it wouldn't even have to be that, precise right I could I could take a little artistic license with some of this um, and I could do a lot of the sort of cleanup with the pen but personally I like to ink first um, that that's my preferred way but I could do all that ink or all that watercolor wash first let it dry now you do have to let it dry completely and then come in with your pen now there are actually uh, water soluble pens that work really well too and um, the water soluble ones are ideal for creating like shadows like let's say you've got a, a uh, an overhang for a eaves trough and you have the light hitting it and it's making a shadow underneath well if if you have a, a water soluble pen along the edge of the eaves trough and then you run some water under there it's just going to make this really nice um, you know graduated shadow that's going to come down the ink will bleed down a little bit um, another thing you might want to add to your sketching for watercolor is uh, a, a um, this is a uniball signo white pigment marker and or pig pigment pen I should say and um, these you can let me see here you can take and you can add little accents with white to things so this is a handy thing to have as well uh, if you're if you're sketching and you want to add a few little highlights or let's say you you, you made you needed to get something back that's white um, and you lost it or whatever, you know, you could 
you could add that in or you have writing on a sign or something like that because some of these things like let's say for example like look at look at the railing on this one uh, that would be pretty hard to do but if you have this white white marker the um, pigment marker pigment pen I keep calling it a marker but it's actually a pen uh, pigment pen it be ideal for that right so uh, water soluble pens um, if you use a uh, let me see let me see if I can find something in my, in my kit <laughs> I, have, I have a whole box full of various um, various pens and stuff do I have any that are wa water soluble um, I don't know that I do. I don't know if I have any with me. But, um, like this one, this is a Copic marker, for example. And if I used a, a marker, actually most markers will be water soluble. So if I used a marker and then I ran under it with the ink, um, that would work. Let me see. Let's say, for example, I've got, I want to come under this um, shadow here, and I take my pen. This one is not water soluble, as you can see, but uh, there are, you, you know, t test them out. Most, most markers are water soluble, and um, actually, you may not realize this, but um, pencil is also water soluble so if you use a, a nice soft pencil do I have one handy this is a hard pencil this is a 2h h yeah just a number two pencil but if I were to take a pencil like this and run under that with my water you can see I can actually make that run so regular graphite is water soluble but you can get um, if you go to your art store you will see that they they will say water soluble on them and um, if you use a really soft pencil that will even um, blend blend out even more because the pigment is uh, much softer. If I use a hard pencil like this 2H and try to blend that, it won't work so well because it, it is a harder lead and I can might I might get a little bit, but the softer the pencil the more it will um, bleed out. So you can use ink, you can use pencil, um, you can use marker, um, you know, get a little creative, right? Uh, watercolor pencil, by the way, can can be used as well. Um, I did do a little bit of watercolor pencil with um, the stenciling last week, but if I were to take a watercolor pencil and let's let's use I'll, I'll use a color. Let's use this color here and. If I use watercolor pencil there, it looks like pencil crayon, but you can see that I can easily get that to run as well. So you can use a combination of uh, cross hatching with your pen, and you can use watercolor pencil, and you can use um, a pigment marker, um, pencil, like have fun with your sketching and, and use all kinds of. Um, uh, use use all kinds of um, different methods and, and experiment a little bit and, and just see what, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, don't be afraid to fail in your watercolor. Like I think that's what holds a lot of people up is they, they're trying to be too perfect on everything that they do. And they don't give themselves enough chance to like play with it. And if you don't play with it, then you're never going to discover everything that it does. Try to get that out of the way there. All right. So, um, yeah. And uh, 
you can ink first you can um, watercolor first whatever way you want to go have fun with it uh, play around and uh, share your results if you do I, I, I would love to see that so if you enjoyed um, watching this give me a thumbs up and tune in next week I think I, I think I'll be here next week I have um, I have a commitment but uh, I'll, I'll see if I can work a little demo in there so anyway have a great week everybody keep your brushes wet and we will see you next time bye for now <laughs>